So 1 plus m into b by 2. Ry square. And now what is Ry square? Ry square is the radius of gyration about the yy axis. Right. So effectively it is equal to 1 by 12 b square. As we have seen in the previous lecture. Right. And n into y is nothing but is equal to b by 2 again. Sorry, h by 2 again into 1 by 12 h squared is equal to 0. So essentially I have this to be equal to 1 plus m b by, m b by 2 into 12 by b squared. Or b, b cancels out. This is 6 plus 6 n by h. So essentially I have 1 plus 6 m by b plus 6 n by h to be equal to 0. Right. Now what does this mean? This essentially means that if I, this is the equation of a straight line and if I can place the load within this equation then what I have is that there won't be any tensile stresses across this section. Right. So let us find this equation out now. Now what is this? This is equal to b by 6 and this is equal to h by 6. So essentially, this what we got to do is, this is, uh, we got to place this load between b by 6, that is, within this point, and h by 6 supposes this point. So this is the straight line. So if I place the load within this region that I am marking just now, then effectively what I do is, I put the stress line to be here. And on the top of the stress line, I will have the tensile stresses. On the bottom of the stress line, I will have the compressive stresses. So for, if I place my load at any point here, the whole cross section will be under some sort of tensile stress. It's a compressive stress. Again, if I place my load within this region, wherein this is now equal to b by 6, and this is equal to again h by 6, then the stress line will be passing through this, and this region will have tensile stress and this whole region will have compressive stress. So within this region if I place, I have this. Within this region also I can place and I can make this to be like this. And within this region if I place, I can make it the stress line to be like this. So effectively within these four walls, if I keep the, the my tensile stresses, then effectively the whole cross section will be under compressive stress. And this shaded portion is my core, core of the section, right, and this is a derivation, now I will try to just draw it very simply, simplify it and draw it, right, now it's like this that I have a cross section which has dimension as this is suppose B and this is suppose H, right, then effectively, there will be compressive stresses acting throughout this cross section. If I can place my load within this core, and this, the coordinate of this is defined as, this is b by 6, this is b by 6, this is h by 6, this is h by 6. Now if this is my positive, I should say this is my y direction and this is my z direction, then effectively this is plus, this is plus, this is minus, this is minus. The same thing we can see for a circular cross section. If we place the load at any point within this region, there won't be any tensile stresses developed and hence this whole cross section will be under compressive stresses and that is what we need for column built of contrib wherein the contrib is weak in tension. Now for some sort of a circular cross section, the core is within this point, right, within this region, wherein the distance of this point from the center is equal to d by 4. So a circle with, a, I should say, with a radius equal to d by 4 from the center of the original circle is my region wherein if I place the load, there won't be any tensile forces within the circular cross section. So this is all for this lecture and in the next lecture I will introduce the concept of Euler's theory and apply it to long columns. Thank you.